as you saw, we ran out of time with the governor. We did not get to constitutional carry for guns. Yesterday, it passed third read in the state house. The governor is expected to sign that into law any day now. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed the interview with the governor. And it was a great interview. Yes. She's awesome, right? Lovely lady. Yep, very, very different than mm -hmm. what we had before. And I'm excited to see what she's going to do for our state. Yes. Yes. And in studio with us, we have Andrea and Larry. And Larry is the author of The Secret of the Can. And I am excited to hear about this book and the concepts in it. I've looked through it a little bit and I liked what I saw. It's neat. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, from time to time I visit with you and I always bring books that bring positive psychology to life. And then every so often I'm lucky enough to actually have someone who is the person that brings positive psychology to life and also writes a book. And in Larry's case, what he represents is a person who took his values and turned it into something to help an organization greater than themselves, and in his case, it's children. And then he took the same messages of positive psychology, which is about attitude, which is about using your values, which is about being a leader versus being led down the wrong path, and turned it into an organization to help children. So, he now, hit you make home in Buckeye? I make home in Buckeye, Arizona. I'm a transplant from Cleveland, Ohio, as of last Thanksgiving. And it sounds like you're happy about that. Uh, well, I set a goal back in 1985. I was on the edge of the Grand Canyon. And I said, when my sons are out of high school, I'm going to move to Arizona. And so you're seeing that actual whole goal process take place all the way. Great. A Wonderful little, to have you here. A little of your background, Larry. A little of my background. I guess you'd say from studying from the priesthood to working for Evil Knievel, I uh, from that point went on a road of personal destruction for 13 years, and I figured if there's a way to mess up your life, here's the... <laughs> I'm a perfectionist, okay? I, le <laughs> I learned how to do it perfectly, but then I... Evil probably helped along well, the yeah, way. He was, yes, he was yeah. a great influence yeah, on that. But, but there was a, a defining moment. Uh, somebody stepped into my life, and his words changed changed my life. And if we look back and we talk to people, everybody can relate back to one instance in their life where there was that defining, that turning moment, however which way that turn took, whether it was negative or positive. And for myself, it was moving in a direction for the next 13 years, and okay, if you dug yourself in this big of a trench, how do you dig yourself out? And so I started to apply principles that I learned, and then my, my motto is, learn it, then live it and then share it. I'm in the share it phase well, right now. Well, I like now. that. Learn it, live it, then share it. Don't share something you don't, haven't lived. I really exactly. like that because there are some people out there that are teaching, but they don't really have that experience of what they're teaching. So live it, learn it, teach it. That's yeah. great. And, and I will also tell you that the way I met Larry is at a personal development seminar, a week-long seminar. And that's one of the things that I always look for in people who write books, who teach others. Are they also doing the work for themselves? Mm -hmm. Are they experiencing it? Are they working mm -hmm. their own stuff as, mm -hmm. within the industry, as we'll talk about? Yeah, because that's, that's a very really important, important criteria. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. Yes. Larry, can you remember the words that turned you around, your defining moment? It wasn't a matter of words. Actually, for 13 years, I, when I was in high school as a junior and senior, I felt I was dumb, I was stupid. It wasn't from outside sources, it was in my own mind, my own thinking, my own process. And so I stopped reading. And I was at a garage sale and a lady walked up to me because I was looking at a book, of all things. Mm -hmm. And it was an older lady. She grabbed me by the arm and she says, do you like that book? Would you like to buy that book? She says, no. I'll tell you what. I want you to have that book if you promise me to read it. Uh -huh. And I offered to pay it, pay her. Great. And it was Og Mandino's uh, The Greatest Miracle in the World. Well, I went home and I read the book, so it was the whole entire book. That gives me chills. That's prophetic. It right. was, uh, it's destiny. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was, that was the turning point. And from that point, uh, it, my life changed. Wow. What do you Great. teach people? What are you telling people in The Secret? When, when you look at The Secret of the Can, when you look at the book, initially the first thing is so people think, oh, that's easy. You just take the garbage and you just throw it in there and you throw it away and you continue on when people say, no, it, that's what we've been doing our entire life. Right. Okay, people, what they do is they throw it in the can and they carry the can with them and after 30 or 40, the can gets pretty heavy. 
Well, why not, in early on in life, learn the secret of the can on how to not carry that can, how not to take it with you? It's not a matter of throwing it in the can. It's a matter you don't absorb it to begin with in the first place. Right. And this developed out of a program I was asked to do a one-day conference after Columbine back in Ohio where we took a whole entire county of students together. Mm -hmm. And for nothing better, I called it Youth for Youth. And that was the idea of this one-day conference. And looking at school safety from a student's perspective. What, what is really involved there? What's really happening? And students said that rumors and gossip is the number one issue. Stereotyping okay. racism and prejudice, because I put these kids in breakout groups and they came back with a, a, a lot of data. Well, from that point after the one-day conference, schools started calling saying, come in our school and pull everybody together. and Let's have these conversations and these talks between each other. And that blossomed into what's now a nonprofit called Youth for Youth. The book is actually the foundation of everything because, see, most people, they want dreams, directions, and goals. They want to set those, but they keep getting distracted by the drama of life. Right, rumors and gossip a lot of times are not founded in truth. It's mm -hmm. just speculation or projection, and people, it's a drama of it that they get sort of addicted to or hooked into. So refocusing them away from that to something else, automatically or naturally, I would think, w they would be drawn to that. They just got to be given that opportunity. Is that what you're saying? That, that's, that's part, part of it. it. There's, there's a lot of energy and negativity. I mean, it just energizes. When you shift over to being positive, right. there's this big law all this big valley of nothingness and it usually gets filled in because people don't know the language of being positive to okay. in, you know to uh, encourage others the language of encouragement the language of self-confidence but they do know the, the language of negativity put downs making fun of people how to criticize they know that perfectly and it just rolls off their tongue very easily so there's a big void there and the idea is that once you understand that there's that void you're going to go through and there are steps you can take to start to replace the language and it is a process that's what really makes the magic happen and, and respecting that we must teach our children children young how to do this so that we don't become the adults that we are and sitting in rooms at 40 and 50 right. years old going to personal right. development yeah, seminars. Going to school, yes. It was just a little while ago. <laughs> it was quite some time ago. There wasn't a conversation like that at Correct. all in school when I was in high school. I graduated in 1982 and I don't remember ever having a conversation in any classroom about being positive or healthy behavior or any of that type you know, of stuff. And that's one of the things that we've learned more and more within the field of personal development and the use of language. The younger we can get people into shifting their language and understanding right. how their attitude and language are connected, how, mm -hmm. it, how they're dealing with others, and particularly for me, how a book can shift your life even when you think you're not a reader. And I, I've just met both of you today and I haven't read your whole book, but I, I'm not getting that you're saying pretend that everything's great. Oh, it's never. about really putting attention and energy into a certain way of living so it truly is great, no, right? No, we know how to make life better. Okay. We, we have science that supports it. When, the, when you do programs with children, you see the results in what they're telling you and there's an actual way to measure the stories that they tell you as to is there an actual improvement in how they are then behaving. It's all connected. Oh, great, wonderful. Yeah. And I now have a new skill set because I'm going to have problems every day. There's problems that arise. You know, I'm going to have bad days. There's going to be negative things coming in my life. But I have a whole new skill set now that I use to apply to this so that it's no longer a problem because yeah. I'm in the habit of developing solutions. Great. Imagine a mindset from a, from a high school student you know, saying, Mom, I'm programmed for success. Yeah. And they move forward. Yeah. As a former classroom teacher, tell me what you perceived as the biggest deterrent in classrooms today. The garbage and the baggage that students came in uh, in the morning with a daily basis. And I remember, my, I remember my superintendent saying, it is your job to teach curriculum, period. Right. Society <laughs> has their own problems. They need to deal with it. I said, well, society comes into my classroom <laughs> seven hours a day. <laughs> and I found out, and see, I'm a, I'm a person who, who sees things a little bit differently that most people don't perceive it. And all I can do, I give information out, and then they start, oh, yeah, they get real clear on things. And I, I started seeing that when I dealt with problems early in the morning, kids were interested in curriculum. They were interested in where they were going. Uh -huh. The other thing I found out is when kids started to set goals, in fact, I've got an article for parents, it's called, have you had the talk with their children yet? And people think right away, it's well, it's the sex yeah, talk, no. you know? Yeah. No, it's not. Have you had the talk about what are the goals for you this year in the classroom? And this happens usually in, in September. By the time you get to next May, what do you want to have accomplished? And set go I remember my one son uh, in second grade, his goal was to learn how to write cursive. 
he was going to learn how to write cursive anyhow. <laughs> but it was his goal. And the thing was, he looks back and he accomplished that goal. Right. He accomplished camping out and sleeping out with his dad. He accomplished, you know, building a fort because I could help him do those things. So when you get parents engaged and you have students in the classroom that have specific goals, all of a sudden they're no longer focused on the drama and the garbage of life. So children reading this book, but also teachers and parents reading this book oh, is going to be yes. helpful, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. This is a great conversation for parents to have with their kids. Thank you. Thank you. Here, thank you. read this and, and move it from there, yes. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph. Very good. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Yes, when we come back, we're going to talk to Ann Harrington, Prescott oh, Dog Magazine. But first, I'm okay. going to tell you where to go to have fun. Where is that, Tanya? Where, where should I go to have fun? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was here. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm having, fun having fun here. Fun. I am. The cue card says to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ed, the Entertainment District in Prescott Valley, that's where fun begins. That's what they say, fun begins there. I say fun always happens there. Dinner and a movie. Harkins Theater sits right there. You can't miss it. It's that big building. If you don't know what it looks like, it's big. And there's a lot of restaurants right around there. Go have dinner, then go over to a movie in the Entertainment District of Prescott Valley.